Our guest this evening is Paul McGuire, and Paul, for many years, he was the uh, many uh, radio host on uh, K. K Bright and a number of Crawford radio stations, and reaching people all across the country with information about what was going on. Oh, but because Paul certainly oh, would not compromise his message, coming from a Christian point of view, why eventually, why he, uh, well, uh, let's put it this way, he and Crawford parted ways, and Sidney, um, uh, he is, a, Paul has written some 22 books. He's a prolific writer. He's certainly a wonderful source of information. I consider him a friend, and I'm proud to call him a friend. And hopefully Paul will be here in a moment to discuss what is going on, Sydney, in America and across the world from a Christian perspective. Now, you can look at things from a political point of view, and so many of them don't make sense. What's really going on in the Crimea? Why is Sidney uh, Sidney Putin, who's always been an appendage of the American CIA, he's himself a CIA, KGB, why is Putin uh, doing what he's doing today? It's all an act, ladies and gentlemen. What is going on in the Near East, what's going on in the Middle East, what's going on in the Far East is all manipulated. And until you understand that very little, uh, that reality is being created for us, and a lot of this is simply a diversion to keep us from understanding that the major threat to America is not what's going on in the Far East, the Middle East, or the Near East. Well, the major threat to the United States is certainly what's going on right here at home. We have a small subversive group that controls both political parties, that controls the banks, that controls most of the major corporations, controls the wealth of our country, controls the media, and their purpose is to use the financial and military power of the United States to bring about a world government. Now, I don't know where Paul McGuire is. Uh, Paul should be here, uh, Sydney, uh, but hopefully he'll be along in just a moment or two. But you must understand that this small group uh, is basically satanic. They've been around for already thousands of years. They've never been as well organized as they are today. They have their agents all throughout the world. And basically their goal is this one world government, which has always been the goal of Satan. And that, of course, is a story that you will read in the Bible if you check it out. And so we do hope that many of you, of course, will certainly check the Bible and I go back and read Revelation 6, or Revelation 6, 8. And right now we've got Paul with us. Hi, Paul. How are we doing? Hey, Dr. Stan. How are you? Good well, to I'm doing just fine. If you pick up the story, what are we going to be talking about tonight? Well, we're going to be talking about uh, what's happening in, uh, in America. And I have an article, two articles that I wrote, but the title kind of would make the theme of tonight's uh, program, if you don't mind. And it's called Artificial Paradise and the New Man, Mankind at the Final Turning Point. <clears throat> and uh, that's kind of the thesis, if you will, of tonight's program. All right, fine. We'll just go right ahead. Don't be bashful. Okay, well, um, this is an article I wrote. And uh, uh, essentially what I'm saying is that the human race has arrived at the final turning point, And there is now no turning back. Uh, we're at a time like no other time in human history, primarily because of science and technology. And uh, the rate of knowledge and expansion in these areas has been multiplying and accelerating for centuries. And I guess we're heading towards a break, but I'll, I'll get back into the specifics of why this time is different than any other time in human history. Well, I think you're absolutely right, ladies and gentlemen. You must understand we live in a different world but a world that was prophesied thousands of years ago. We'll be back in just a moment oh, with Paul McGuire. <coughs> well, this is Dr. Stan here, I guess, this evening, Paul McGuire. And Paul is saying we're living in a different time. And suddenly we have tremendous technology now that has never existed before. But so much of this fits into the preconceived plan that is prophesied thousands of years ago. Paul, you go right ahead with your story. Well, Dr. Stan, the, 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 the rate of knowledge uh, in regards to technology and science has, has not been a constant. It's been multiplying and accelerating for centuries. And um, it actually, the there's two technologies. There's the technology that the general public 
uh, understands and believes that exists, but parallel to the technology that the American public is aware of is secret and hidden technology that is about 100, 200 years uh, into the future. So if you told the average American uh, that these technologies existed, most of them would laugh and say, well, that's the realm of science fiction. But the reality is it's not science fiction. It's just been hidden from the American public. In addition, because the primary purpose of the public education system is not to educate but to dumb down, <clears throat> people have been indoctrinated to, so that they can only think in a very small box. They can't think outside the box. And in case somebody is skeptical about my assertion that the public education is for the purpose of indoctrination, well, that's what the founders, the secular founders uh, like John Dewey and others, that's what they said publicly in their own writings. So this is not some far right-wing conspiracy. This is uh, paraphrasing from the people who, who developed the educational system. So now, in addition to the acceleration, we are now seeing a convergence of what I call simultaneous data flows in fields like genetics, computers, neurological science, transhumanism, artificial intelligence, uh, which will culminate in some kind of singularity, psychology, quantum physics, biotechnology, medicine, computer brain interfaces, and then uh, all the media. Now, how these work is that these are synergistic components of what I call the convergence of data flows. And in, in military terms, it would be called, or in military science, uh, this would be referred to as a force multiplier effect. Now, what a force multiplier effect is, is when you take different components and you uh, synergistically put them together, they, they have uh, an impact that far, far excels the impact of, of any single weapon. And um, I want to stress that this is not happening by accident. Uh, the reality is is that there is a uh, what they call a scientific elite um, or an elite that rules this world. And they are using very, very advanced mathematics, psychology, occult-based science, uh, and they have been for centuries. And their goal is to create a counterfeit of the kingdom of God on planet Earth with man being God. And uh, that counterfeit of the kingdom of God I refer to as an artificial paradise. And the counterfeit of the kingdom of God is the new world order. So when we hear the term the new world order, the new world order is simply a counterfeit of the kingdom of God on Earth where God is out of the equation, and a, and a false Christ, the Antichrist, will rule this, this new world order. So this um, uh, technology uh, flows right in line and right in sync uh, with Bible prophecy going all the way back to the days of Noah. Are we still on? Uh, Dr. Stan, I can't hear you, so um, maybe you can hear me, and I'll hang up, and hopefully I will get a call back. God bless you all, Paul McGuire.
Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Paul, are you there? Oh, Paul, are you there? Paul, are you there? Yeah, is this Dr. Stan? Yes, go right ahead. I'm sorry for the oh. interruption. Go ahead. No problem. Um, I think I left off on the fact that these various forces um, are what they call, in military terms, a force multiplier effect, where you have uh, a different components, but when they work together, they have a far more powerful impact. Now, um, the point, though, that I'm trying to, to stress, and, and this is the key point, um, there has never been a time in human history ever where we have had the level of advanced technology and science uh, that is on a scale undreamed of by previous generations. So we are now at the point of no return because the technologies and sciences we have now developed and we are now implementing most of which the American people are uh, unaware of, um, once they're put in place, and they're being put in place now, there will be no turning back. And I'll, I'll give you an example of that. An example of that would be what we call the computer brain interface and the concept of the world brain, first developed by the science fiction writer H.G. Wells. And the computer brain interface, will work with a biochip or a nanochip implant placed in the brain of every person on planet Earth, which could easily be the mark of the beast referred to in the book of Revelation. But the computer brain interface does a number of things. First of all, it allows uh, the amplification of human intelligence and memory uh, through a computer brain interface. Uh, it, it allows for uh, transactions financially, and uh, a number of positive things, medical database, so on and so forth. But the danger is, is once you establish a computer brain interface, you, you are using an RFID signal via satellite uh, with an electronic chip placed in people's brains to, com to, compu uh, to, to communicate with a computer. That gives the computer the power to override the human will, to control emotion, and now you have the prospect of the ultimate totalitarian state because the computer brain interface allows an elite, a scientific elite, to exercise total, absolute control and dominion over every citizen on planet Earth. And once that's set in motion... I don't know of any way to turn it back. I would certainly share your concern, but don't you think there's going to be a mass genocide before they actually start to do this? Uh, yes, there's, there's going to be a number of things. And, and I know your listeners are, are, are pretty savvy on this, but, but the average American is not savvy at all. So we go back to this elite, and you've talked about this elite in a number of your books, and you've been talking about it on your radio show for years, decades. This elite, um, they see themselves as above traditional morality. And this is not my assessment. This is paraphrasing or quoting their own words. So, for example, one of the Fabian socialists, one of the architects of the New World Order, uh, Bertrand Russell, he literally came out and said that truly high-minded men are not bound by traditional morality. And Bertrand Russell called for mass genocide. He called for uh, the use of biological plagues, nuclear warfare, mass starvation, and endless wars, to radically reduce the population by billions of people. And if people think that all the calamities on planet Earth are, are, are the result of random chance, they're crazy. These are planned genocidal events. H.G. Wells, and I quote him, I, I quote all these people, by the way, in my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America, and I document uh, the books that they wrote so people don't have to take my word for it they can see documentation for these outrageous statements. And then you have um, 
so many others. And these, these elite are calling for the eradication of approximately 6 billion people uh, on planet Earth in the next couple of decades. And they're very serious about it. And, of course, to the average individual listening to the program, that sounds ridiculous. But we have the books, and certainly everything that uh, Paul is saying is absolutely true. And all you need to do is certainly go onto the Internet and type in Georgia Guidestones and look at their, their, their secret document of their secret edifice there in Elberton, Georgia. They put it up, I didn't put it up, where they call for the elimination over 90% of the population of the world. Go right ahead, Paul. Well, Dr. Stan, as, as you know, uh, when we go back to Adolf Hitler and the Third Reich, <clears throat> Adolf Hitler and the Third Reich, this was uh, a genetic uh, dictatorship. It was a DNA dictatorship, uh, which employed the science of eugenics and the occult. And that, that, that wasn't a peripheral issue. That was the main issue. And what Rockefeller did is he simply took the research from the Rockefeller Institute in uh, Cold Harbor, uh, New York, in the 1920s, which had been experimenting on the science of eugenics. He took uh, some of the theories of Margaret Sanger, who deliberately raised up abortion clinics in minority neighborhoods, and that practice continues to this day. And... Uh, because, you see, these people uh, put on the facade of being multicultural, diverse, uh, but the reality is they are racist. They believe that the white Aryan race is the superior race. And Hitler carried that out uh, in, a, in, a, in an experiment of eugenics where he, uh, through selective breeding, he annihilated 7 to 8 million Jews, Protestants, uh, mentally retarded, and others that he deemed to be genetically inferior. And then his goal was to create a master race using uh, uh, selective DNA, DNA of, of the Nordic, blonde-haired, blue-eyed race, the Aryan race, which Hitler believed was the, the superior race. So this genetic racism didn't go away. It's just hidden. Um, so... This is, the, this is the game plan for what's going on now. So they believe in the theories of Malthu, Mal, Malthusian theory. And now Malthu lived in the 1800s in, in uh, Great Britain, and uh, he was an apostate preacher, and he came up with the, the false idea that all mankind's problems were due to excessive population growth, which is simply not true. Uh, and he said that the way we solve all of mankind's problems is through a radical reduction of the population of planet Earth, which, by the way, is very interesting because it is the opposite of God's plan for mankind. God's plan for mankind is be fruitful and multiply. And in God's uh, creation of planet Earth, uh, the reality is that there are no, uh, uh, there's no such thing as scarcity. Uh, energy shortages and food shortages are complete mythologies. Um, so th they, they use Malthusian philosophy, uh, which they believe, and they are busy eradicating uh, about 6 billion people. Their, their goal, and you mentioned the Georgia tombstone, is to bring down the Earth's population. Hold that thought. Hold that sure. thought. We'll be right back in a moment here. Well, this is Dr. Stan, and certainly Paul is talking about these various uh, ideas and basically the fact that Adolf Hitler uh, and certainly the Holocaust was an effort to apply uh, certainly the scientific techniques of uh, genetic engineering to create a super race. And, of course, that Adolf Hitler actually thought it was the white, the blonde, blue-eyed Northern European. Now, remember, Adolf Hitler was uh, said he had black hair and a black mustache, and yet, of course, he, and he was not Northern European, and yet, of course, uh, this was his purpose. And they did. They killed an awful lot of people, going along with the ideas put forward by Malthus in the 1800s. And Malthus basically talked about 
on the fact that we needed to radically reduce the population of the need of the world and that these ideas of euthanasia have been around ever since then. It's all about genetic engineering, and Chris the Rockefellers picked this up, and it is being applied in America today. Go right ahead, Paul. Well, Stan, you know, you have, you've, been, you've been a pioneer on this for a long time. Um, we take Madame Blavatsky, the Russian occult teacher, and we take um, the, the, the female founder of Lucas Trust, her name just escapes me. Perhaps you can remind me. Uh, the female finder of the Lucius Trust. The, the female. I forgot her name. All oh, right. Well, it'll come to me in yeah. just a moment. You go ahead. Okay. So when you read their writing, when you read Blavatsky's writing uh, in externalization of the hierarchy, and she's an occult teacher that influenced Hitler and uh, many of the elites, she, she openly praises Hitler and Mussolini and the and and Lenin and Stalin and the other dictators, she literally play, uh, praises them for slaughtering 200 million people, because she says in her own writings that these men, these dictators, were doing uh, the work of God. Now this is a this is a demonic, Luciferian, perverse belief system, but Lucifer's trust. Uh, was established on the grounds of the United Nations, and Lucis Trust, let's say, is the official religious body at the United Nations. And so our world leaders like Rockefeller and others, they totally buy into Lucis Trust. Now, Lucis Trust was short for Lucifer Trust, and they got in trouble and they had to move off the grounds of the U.N., but the U.N. still believes that. So when you have Christian leaders... Uh, all smiley and telling you how much they love you, and yet they are in partnership with the United Nations, uh, what you really need to understand is we judge somebody's uh, intent not by their words, by their actions. Why would any Christian leader with a big smile on his face join forces with an international body whose stated objective is to slaughter Billions of people through starvation and war and diseases. And uh, people want to pretend that this is not so, but we, we both have seen the documentation. We know that it's so. Absolutely. Go ahead. So now we are moving into a different time period uh, where transhumanism, uh, which is simply... Uh, the biotechnology, uh, biotech science, where we are using genetic engineering, uh, the modification of human DNA, and most importantly, interspecies breeding, where they are now uh, mixing the DNA of man and animal, and some people believe the DNA of man, animal, uh, and Nephilim, which would be fallen angel. Now, if that's the case, I personally think it is the case, that's a fulfillment of the words of Jesus Christ when he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Christ was not referring to the uh, wickedness and violence uh, alone in the days of Noah. He was specifically referring to Genesis 6 when the sons of God, which liter is literally is translated the Benai Elohim, and the Hebrew scholars said specifically that the sons of God meant fallen angels. So all these Christian theologians who have revised biblical history and, and have tried to maintain a Sethite view that uh, it, it means something else have not interpreted the Bible correctly. The Hebrew scholars said the sons of God meant, uh, meant fallen angels, and the fallen angels in Genesis 6 had sex with human women and produced the Nephilim. Well, the thing is that, that there is a spiritual component to everything going on. I do believe that there are supernatural beings out there, and of course we don't know who they are, but they do have an agenda, and it's all part of this population control agenda that is certainly being uh, certainly enacted today. The average individual finds it difficult to believe these things are true. You can go to my website, RadioLiberty.com, and pull down my population control agenda monograph, Population Control Agenda Monograph, or you can get it on the, uh, so the 
Uh, just Google it, read it, and understand. Paul, you go right ahead. Yes, Dr. Stan. You know, one thing, uh, I for, for decades uh, over the airwaves, I've issued a challenge <clears throat> to any listener uh, listening on, or watching on television or radio uh, that anyone who, who is a serious debater and wants to debate in a legitimate public forum, um, I will take them on in a debate. I'm not talking about somebody who just calls me up and wants to, 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 to promote himself, but if, but if he's a legitimate debater and wants to hold it in a public forum or hold the, I want the debate to be live so it can't be uh, edited, uh, I will debate anybody who would like to challenge my assertions um, and I've issued this challenge for 20 years. I've never had anybody accept it. And the reason I'm issuing the challenge is because I have solid, thorough documentation for my assertion. But I have never had anybody challenge me. And the reason I've never had anybody challenge me is because they know in a debate they don't have documentation to prove that what I'm asserting is false. So um, I only say that to, to reinforce credibility. So here, here we are um, in our time period, and um, a number of things uh, are happening that, that relate to what we're discussing. Um, first of all, um, genetically modified organisms, GMO. So we now have major GMO companies that have changed the DNA and the genetics of our entire food supply, and what what is built into GMO food is disease, uh, a weakened immune system, a shorter lifespan, and uh, I believe that in GMO food there's a neurological, biological rewiring uh, that is making people weaker, uh, less intelligent, and giving them shorter lifespans. The elite don't eat GMO food. You know, I was reading about Henry Kissinger when he was attending the Bilderberg meeting the other day, and they said he was healthy and vibrant at the age of 91 years old. Well, the reason he's healthy and vibrant, vibrant, he's not going to public health care. He's not going to the... Hold that thought. Hold yeah. that thought. We'll be back here in just a moment. And certainly Paul is talking about the effect of, of our diet and the, the fact that general net, genetically modified foods are having a profound impact on the health of the people and certainly predisposing them to disease and, and destroying their minds, destroying their bodies. They know exactly what they're doing. Why are they modifying the food? Why do they have a doomsday seed bank? Why are they going to destroy the population as a whole, except for the elite? And then, of course, they have the doomsday seed bank for what it's time to start in all over again. Our guest is, of course, Paul McGuire. Paul, before we go on, would you like to tell our listeners how they can get to your website, get your information? Yeah, we have uh, lots of free or articles, a lot of free research, YouTube for people to watch. And my website is www.paulmcguire.com. McGuire is M-C-G-U-I-R-E. The brand new website is paulmcguire uh, dot us. But even if you go to paulmcguire dot com, it will flip you to the brand new website paulmcguire dot us. And we all have all kinds of free resources for people uh, to watch to educate them. So tons of hundreds of pages of articles they can read for free. Um, so so we have this uh, GMO food. That now that's one thing. And I was speaking of Henry Kissinger being 91 years old and very vibrant. I can guarantee, and Brzezinski is uh, elderly and very vibrant. And you'll notice that a number of these elite globalists are very vibrant and healthy in their latter years. The reason for that is is that they are not going to public health care. They're not going to the same health care that the American middle class is going to. They're seeing elite doctors. They're getting treatments that are not legal for the average American. And they're getting diets and nutrition that are, that are giving them longevity uh, beyond what the average person will experience. Uh, they're not going to walk into an Obamacare clinic. Uh, they have their own private elite clinic. And people need to understand 
that uh, the purpose of public health care and the purpose of the pharmaceutical industry and the purpose of the GMO food is intended to shorten the lifespan uh, of Americans and people all around the world because what they want is they want people alive when they are productive. And then when they arbitrarily uh, decide what age a person is not uh, productive, they want them to die as fast as possible. And so what they've done with GMO food, uh, the pharmaceutical industry, and uh, uh, a number of other factors, um, people are, unlike uh, the previous generation, people are dying. They're getting diabetes. They're getting cancers. They're getting all kinds of Alzheimer's, uh, epidemic and Alzheimer's. They're getting all these unnecessary diseases. And the next step will be uh, euthanasia uh, because the health care plans are literally modeled after Adolf Hitler's universal health care plan, which was called T4. And the reason Adolf Hitler was able to provide an affordable health care plan to the German people is that when they became really sickly or elderly or had expensive uh, diseases, he euthanized them. He terminated them. And the, the this generation, the several generations, which were all gung-ho about voting for abortion or, or didn't really stand up against abortion, they have, they, have, they have sowed something and they're going to reap it because their children have adopted this abortion mentality. And when their children see them with Alzheimer's and all these other diseases that are costly and expensive, their children do not want to be saddled with the taxation and the debt and they're going to go along with this uh, uh, lie that it's merciful uh, to pull the plug and euthanize their parents. So this abortion mentality, right from the beginning, uh, ends up being uh, a methodology for mass, youth, mass, mass euthanasia. And that's what's going to happen, because it's the only way you can save trillions of dollars and make health care affordable. Uh, it's a tragic, but it's true. Go ahead. Now, I, I know I'm heavy. Uh, I, I have a tendency of being heavy. And I, I want to mention uh, another thing here, uh, and then I want to give hope, because I don't want to just bring people to despair or learned helplessness or, or uh, depression, because there, there, are, there are answers uh, that, that we can employ. Christianity does not teach fatalism. Um, th- this concept of this uh, new world order out of chaos, and by the way, when, when we look at all these systems in America failing, when we look at the soaring trillion-dollar debt, when we look at all the social systems failing and the anarchy and chaos, none of this is random. This is all a, a, a very developed strategy uh, by community organizers like Saul Alinsky, who created Manufactured Crisis, and then the Columbia University professors, Cloward and Pivot, created a strategy where, where they deliberately designed to overwhelm every social institution like healthcare with chaos so, and, so that they could deliberately break it down and replace it with a Marxist solution. So all the chaos that people see and people are all getting mad at the Democrats and the Republicans. This is planned chaos. These people aren't stupid. Uh, the president isn't stupid, and neither are the elected representatives. The purpose is to overwhelm the system so it collapses, so they can replace it with a Marxist system. And that's the game plan. And let me suggest people read Cloward and Piven. Cloward and Piven writing back in the 1960s, talks about creating the chaos that would collapse the system. Go right ahead. Yeah, right. So, so, so people need, need to understand uh, the, the soaring uh, deficit, uh, the, the financial mismanagement, and, and uh, the immigration problem, or whatever the problem is, the health care problem, this is not the result of incompetence. It's not the result of poor planning. 
This is the result of a strategic plan to create chaos because the motto of the Illuminati is order out of chaos. And it's how they're going to bring in a, a new system. So as, as we move forward, what we see uh, coming in, into, into place is what uh, Aldous Huxley called the scientific dictatorship, where through scientific mind control, people will learn to love their slavery and servitude. And that's what we, we have going on here. But we go back to Adolf Hitler. Interestingly enough, Adolf Hitler wrote a book, The New World Order. H.G. Uh, Wells wrote a book called The New World Order. And Hitler called uh, for uh, a genetic modification of what he called the new man. And it was the, cr- the genetic creation of a new man that, that was Hitler's goal. And that's what the goal of transhumanism is and biotechnology is. So what we're seeing is that um, a scientific dictatorship using genetic engineering is creating a a caste system, like in India, uh, 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 like alpha, beta, delta classes, where people are being genetically bred to be workers, and some people are genetically bred to be uh, like managers. And it's done very subtly, so people can't catch on. Now, you add to that uh, that the human race, through computer brain interfaces, is going to be linked together in what they call a hive mind, where mankind becomes like a giant bee's nest controlled by a supercomputer and super intelligence uh, run by an elite-controlled uh, world brain. And let me read you what Hitler said, though, regarding uh, this genetic technology of making godmen or the Ubermensch that, that Nietzsche talked about. And this is, this is an exact quote from Hitler, and I have this in my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America. Hitler said these words, What will the social order of the future be like, comrades? I will tell you, there will be a class of overlords. After them, the rank and file of the party members and the hierarchical order and then the great mass of anonymous followers, servants, and workers in, pre- in perpetuity, and beneath them again, all the conquered foreign races, the modern slaves, and over and above all, these will reign a new and exalted nobility of whom I, ca- I cannot speak, but of all these plans, the militant members will know nothing. The new man is living among us now. He is here. Isn't that enough for you? I will tell you a secret. I have seen the new man. He is intrepid and cruel. I was afraid of him. And this is a quote from Adolf Hitler uh, in 1939. So obviously Hitler saw firsthand the genetic creation of a of a soulless, transhumanist Superman. And he wrote that then after he wrote Mein Kampf. Correct. And this is called The New World Order? Uh, the, 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 the source I have for that, hold on, I lost my page, it's Adolf Hitler, and then it says Herman Rushing, and I believe it's from a book called Hitler Speaks in 1939, but it's an exact quote from Hitler. All oh, right, fine, and of course... Uh, I think that uh, that's very, very accurate. Uh, he says, seeing these people, he knows who they are, and even he was afraid of them. Go ahead. So what, what people need to understand is, is Bible prophecy is, is not to be taken as a metaphor. It's to be taken literally. So when Jesus Christ, and then, then we need to understand that, that uh, unfortunately, the, the, the schools of theology in America are dumbed down. The professors are dumbed down, and they teach dumbed down curriculum. Because the Bible, if you take the Bible literally as the inspired Word of God, an inerrant Word of God, the Bible is a DNA, digital, holographic, genetic book that deals with multidimensional warfare, portals into other dimensions, the abyss, and uh, 
uh, a holographic antichrist uh, and, and, and very sophisticated scientific things. I mean, going back to the Tower of Babel, the Tower of Babel uh, was built to be a portal into another dimension. That's why the, the, the translation for the Tower of Babel is the gate of the gods. Well, it's an interdimensional gate of the gods, small g, and the gods are fallen angels. That was just one interdimensional border, portal. And then, of course, we understand that the primary purpose of the flood was genetic. Um, G- uh, God wiped out the human race and the animal kingdom as well by a flood. Why did he do that? Well, this was, was not a generic judgment against the wickedness of mankind. The reason we know that is because God specifically told Noah to build an ark and to call all of the animal kingdom, two by two, male and female, into the ark, as well as Noah and his family, which were male and female. That tells us that the purpose of the ark was to preserve, was to preserve male and female uh, of every uh, species for the purpose of reproduction. The ark is a reproduction vehicle, and this is all about DNA, because... What happens is the flood wipes out all flesh, and after all flesh is wiped out, God tells uh, Noah and the animals to replenish the earth, uh, to reproduce once again, and start all over again. This is clearly uh, a genetic, um, um, a genetic uh, event, and and on top of that. This is reinforced countless times by other scriptures, uh, the most popular being Jesus saying, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. He was referring to the return of the Nephilim. And then you read the books in the New Testament, such as Jude, uh, and we no- don't normally take the book of Enoch seriously, but when the book of Jude tells us to read the book of Enoch, then we have permission from the Lord to read the book of Enoch. And in the passages mentioned by the book of Jude, Enoch is an account of the fallen angels uh, and how they first descended on planet Earth in Mount Hermon, and they mated with human women, and these fallen angels imparted highly advanced scientific uh, technology to the human race. Now, what's also interesting is the Mount Hermon area is the area of Phoenicia. And Phoenicia is from what, where we get the word Phoenix from. So on the back of the U.S. dollar, we see the symbol of the Phoenix. And on the other side, we see the Illuminati pyramid with the words New World Order on the base of it. I think you really need to explain that the you're talking about the eagle, but it wasn't initially an eagle. What was first put on the back of the dollar bill, it was a phoenix bird. Go ahead. Co- correct. And so you have to say, well, why is there a phoenix on the back of the dollar, and why is there a pyramid? Well, the, the pyramid is clearly an Illuminati pyramid, because we see the all-seeing eye of Horus, or the all-seeing eye of Lucifer, uh, towards the top of the pyramid. Now, the purpose of the phoenix has to do with ancient Phoenicia. It's a reference to, it's a, it's a reference to America's destiny being interconnected to ancient Phoenicia. And what happened in ancient Phoenicia? That was the general location of Mount Hermon, where the fallen angels descended, and mated with human women. So then we go to the 1600s, where Sir Francis Bacon, the head of the occult Rosicrucian movement, planned for America to be the head of the New World Order, and he also planned for America to be the New Atlantis. Now, the, the, the phoenix refers to the fallen angels that made it with human women in Phoenicia. And Sir Francis Bacon got his ideas of government based on uh, Plato, who got his ideas from Atlantis, 
Atlantis was ruled by ten god kings, but these ten god kings were fallen angels. So there's a deep secret here that we're going to see uh, uh, opened up in the next couple of years. I fear that you're absolutely right. I don't think most people understand the spiritual component of what's going on. Of course, I guess it's been Paul McGuire. Paul, thank you very much for being with us. It's always a pleasure to have you. Look forward to having you again real soon. God bless you, Dr. Stan, and God bless all your listeners. Bye-bye. We'll be back in a moment. Well, this is Dr. Stan, and uh, certainly we hope you enjoyed the program with Paul McGuire because uh, there's a great deal of wisdom in what he has to say. And unless you understand the background of the occult forces working certainly within America since its inception, and really going back thousands of years, even before anybody had ever heard of uh, America. But you must understand there's this small group of people working behind the scenes to bring about a world government. And it was always prophesied that it would come uh, from the United States. When America was initially founded, we were predominantly Christians who limited the power of government so men could be free. But the elites were here. This elite group that controlled the banking system and the wealth of our nation, even early on. And, of course, they did everything then they could to utilize, certainly, their position of power so they could one day take control of our government and use the financial and military power of the United States to bring about a world government. Why do we have our troops stationed in 130 nations throughout the world? Why do we have a massive embassy in in Baghdad? with at least 10,000 uh, contractors and military forces and, uh, and other people over there. Why, Sydney, should we have our, our permanently stationed uh, well over 40,000 troops in Germany and 30,000 troops in Japan and 20,000 troops in uh, Korea? We occupy those countries, ladies and gentlemen, and nobody wants to tell the American people. Well, our job is to get the truth out. So, basically, uh, you can read our material, you need to read my book, Brotherhood of Darkness, read our newsletters, go to RadioLiberty.com, our website, RadioLiberty.com, you can watch our DVDs, uh, you can certainly read our newsletters, you can listen to our programs, and so the Internet is a wonderful way to listen. Uh, people all over the world listen to Radio Liberty by Internet, and basically, of course, you can as well, and encourage others to listen. We need to reach as many people as we can in the allotted time. Remember, of course, God makes the decision what's going to happen. Our job is simply to educate as many people as we can in the time given to us. So uh, remember our website, RadioLiberty.com, our telephone number, one 800 And certainly, we do need your financial help to maintain our network of stations across America. We're five hours a day, five days a week, while we're able to reach people all across America with the news behind the news, the story behind the story, and an understanding that we were involved in a spiritual battle for the souls of men and the survival of Christian civilization. So once again, our website, RadioLiberty.com, Please go there and encourage other people to go there to listen to us on the Internet. And, of course, hopefully when they listen to us, they'll begin to learn and then they can teach others. You need to get my book, Brotherhood of Darkness. You need to get certainly the book, The New Media Monopoly, which will give you an understanding of how this small group of evil and and wealthy people control the media. That's the New Media Monopoly in my book, Brotherhood of Darkness. They're available by calling 1-800-544-8927. If you want to know how Hitler escaped, you need to get the four CDs that uh, did Hitler escape. And yes, Hitler did escape. If you want to know how we financed Sydney, the, the Nazis, both before and during World War II, my interviews with John Loftus. And of course, they're called the, the War Against the Jews. 
the war against the Jews, go to our website. There's so much great material there. You need to get it. You need to repeat it. You need to copy anything that we've done and get it out across America, across the world. And then join us in this epic struggle for the survival of Christian civilization and the souls of men. Again, our telephone number, one 800 544-8927 and please pray for America pray for revival but pray for radio liberty for our provision and protection until tomorrow at the same time may the Lord be with you